It's my birthday! Shh! I don't want to talk about it till the end of the show. It is your birthday period. It's a statement of fact. Not even an exclamation point? This is more professional. It's not like she discovered a cure for cancer. Kelsey Ballerini's divorce is getting messy, and now people are taking sides. After she did an interview with Call Her Daddy about her divorce yesterday, her ex-husband Morgan Evans put out a statement saying that he was not happy, but who's in the right? We may be getting a new Chrisley family reality show now that the parents are in jail. A girl is going viral on Twitter for saying that our generation's decision to not have a traditional family in our 30s is paving the way. Well, I've got a lot to say about that. Speaking of, I have some life updates for you. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics, the first daily conservative pop culture show without the leftist propaganda. Thumbs up, subscribe, and click the notifications bell because we learned that apparently just being subscribed still won't tell you when new episodes come out. So now, let's start the show. Why, God, why? <laughs> We had a deal, let the others grow old, not me. Morgan Evans is pissed off at his ex-wife Kelsey Ballerini for releasing an EP about their divorce and then going on Call Her Daddy to discuss it. But should he be mad? Kelsey Ballerini, welcome to Call Her Daddy. Thank you. Kelsey Ballerini is a married woman. The 24-year-old country singer tied the knot to her Australian love and fellow country singer Morgan Evans. I didn't want to have a wedding. Why? I swore I would never get married. I think he loves me more at 23. And I love me more at 29. Kelsey Ballerini and Morgan Evans are going their separate ways. Ballerini filed for divorce after nearly five years of marriage. It got nasty. Yeah, it did. As he's putting out a song about being blindsided, he's taking half the house that he didn't pay for. How was I married to this person for this long? And I had no idea that, that that bit of character was tucked within that human being. After the interview comes out, Morgan posts on Instagram, it's really sad for me to see this person who I spent so much of my life with and loved with all my heart saying things that aren't reality and that leave out what really happened. She knows I'm not the type of guy to speak on those things publicly. If this is what she needs to heal, I hope it helps. All I ask is that if you're on my pages, please don't be mean. Don't be mean to Kelsey. Don't be mean to each other. Life's too short. Ha <laughs> you fool! You fell victim to one of the classic blunders. I'm actually kind of annoyed for Kelsey that he would post that because he released his song over for you about their divorce before the divorce was finalized. He asked how long it had been over for her and so she answered in her EP. Then he did press for that song and he sent it to the radio. So she does this interview with Call Her Daddy and this is what upsets him and he's like, you know, I don't know why she has to go talking about her divorce. He's been talking about the divorce. Was the interview juicy? I mean, yeah, I think it was, but what we have here is a classic case of she's more famous, so her press and her music are gonna get more attention than his, and so now he feels like she's playing dirty when I think she's playing fair. Weird to have people in your business, period, even before the song came out in a way that that hadn't happened before. Right. I yeah, mean, totally. I mean, it was a high-profile marriage. Yeah. And with that, you the spoils of it was great. Yep. And then also, I got to imagine, though, I just was so mad at people about – I was just like – I was. Def, I, you didn't even need to defend it. And you, you've handled this like so freaking mature, and I just wouldn't have. I, I just wouldn't. I would be, I'd lit things on fire. Thanks, man. Yeah, it was really tough in that way. And I am – I mean, the only thing you control is you and how you feel and what you're doing. So I just uh, – thankfully, I have good people around me that would keep reminding me of that and – keep me grounded in that way and um i'm i'll always be grateful for that i yeah. found found some really like true friends in life and in business and um yeah i credit them with any of the <laughs> any of the smart well, decisions i made like you really learn who like who your folks are when yeah. when when times aren't the best when there's really no huge benefit for them to be your folks she is sharing her point of view that can be uncomfortable, but I think she was very respectful. He needs to take the L. They honestly both seem to be selfish in their relationship to certain extents, and that's going to breed resentment. I think someone like Morgan Evans needs to find a girl that isn't famous to marry and have kids with, you know, one that wants to be a stay-at-home wife and a mom and hold down the fort while he goes out and travels and does his, you know, C-lister country star gigs. Let's be real. She was his meal ticket, and he's being very hypocritical. Critical. It's so funny, like the cliches of music are true, 
Like the like what? more personal you can make a song, the more widely it will relate to people. I've heard that so many times. Mm-hmm. And and the other one is um, like, like true pain makes the best art. Mm-hmm. And like this song is both of those examples for me. If you're sad that you won't get your Chrisley knows best fix because Todd and Julia are in jail, I've got good news for you. Savannah Chrisley teased on her Unlocked with Savannah Chrisley podcast that soon fans will be able to get a glimpse of her family's new normal with a reality spinoff that will touch on where the family is at with mom and dad being gone and how they're coping with it. Savannah said that she's currently in discussions with some production companies and that the show would also heavily focus on the siblings having to raise two kids and all of them stepping in to make sure that they have what they need emotionally, psychologically, physically, with a level of humor. I think that the show would do really well, actually, and I think fans would enjoy it. It'd be nice extra income for them and a smart way to kind of keep the brand alive while Todd and Julie are locked up. Oh, and you, you, my friend, would be the belle of the ball. Don't drop the soap, don't drop the soap. Michael, please. This girl on Twitter is going viral for posting that her bikini waxer said something that blew her mind last week. She said, we were talking about feeling lost after turning 34 and why we felt that way. And she said, we're the first generation of 30 somethings not building traditional families. There's no blueprint for us. We're paving the way. The honorable thing for our species to do is deny our programming, stop reproducing. Walk hand in hand into extinction. One last midnight, brothers and sisters opting out of a raw deal. Hey, I mean, what can a family give you that a bikini waxer can't, nah I mean? Is this the road they're paving? They're right about one thing, they are paving a path, but it heads straight to purposelessness, loneliness, and hollowness of their existence. These girls are not the first to try this path, they just think they are because the ones before them died out with no one to remember them. Where's the road? Road, 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 road. New episode of The Spillover tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. I'm talking to a former child therapist who was so concerned about the gender ideology and critical race theory being taught to kids in therapy in schools that she's now voted conservative for the first time and taken it upon herself to teach parents that they're allowed to have a say in what their kids are being taught and how to fight back against this corruption. We also talk a lot about raising kids with autism because she's an expert on that and it's a subject that I've never discussed yet. How's 30 so far, you ask? Well, last night I googled information about dates. Not the candlelight dinner kind, the weird fruit kind. What other TMI embarrassing things can I share? Well, I have been close to pulling the trigger on a colonic. I might do that after I get back from my trip to get the seed oils out of me. I don't think that's really how that works, but I also just want a good excuse to try getting one anyway. I'm leaving today for a trip to Cancun with a couple girlfriends for my birthday, so no politics episodes until the first week of March. I know that sounds far away, but it's only a few days because February is short, remember? I'm hoping to take some smoking hot birthday pictures, so everybody better gas me up in the comments when I do because it's my 30th birthday and I will cry. Also, I have a list of things I changed my mind on in my 20s that I think would be very helpful to you young bucks out there. Is it cuter to post that as my birthday Instagram caption or should it be something else like a blog that I write? I need you to decide for me. I've never been to Cancun. I am wishing for a tan, a man, and mezcal. Hopefully all three at once. Happy birthday to me. Also, do not write anything to me about being 30, flirty, and thriving. It is so gay, yes, I said it, and overplayed. We are more creative than this, cute conservatives. I am hoping to just singe people's eyebrows off with my content while I'm on this trip. I never post on Instagram, so none of you better miss it. There's like a little favorites button on Instagram now. If you turn that on and say that I'm one of your favorite accounts, you won't miss any of my posts. All the things. My biggest concern is what books to bring. I have to figure that out today. This is it, it's the end of an era. It's all downhill from here. Make sure you thumbs up this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss my downfall. Back March 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda, Monday through Thursday. I'm Alex Clark and this is Politics. <laughs>